Welcome back to Backfire. Today we're talking about two different things where it's all about accuracy, but we're going to cover why you so often miss even when your aim was perfect. And we're going to talk about step by step by step how to look through your gun and make sure it's going to be accurate for you. This is the step-by-step -step process I follow every time I get a new gun in for review that's not shooting how it should. Before we can dive into those steps though, I wanna go through a little scenario to kinda highlight the way that these mistakes happen. So let's say you have a good one MOA gun that you feel really confident in. You take it out hunting and you say, I'm never gonna shoot past 400 yards. I can shoot accurately to 400 yards. I know I can, that's the furthest that I'm going to shoot. Okay, but how is it that so many hunters who practice all year long still end up gut shooting a deer? Here's how it can happen. So let's say the deer's vitals are eight inches, just for the sake of argument. You say, no problem, my gun can shoot four inches at 400 yards because it shoots one, one inch at 100 yards. Then you're very good at calling wind, but you do miss it by two miles per hour and five degrees. Now, the potential for where your shot could go just got even bigger. But your scope is an MOA scope and it has a quarter MOA adjustment. So if your exact point of aim is right between those clicks, then you've already entered one eighth MOA of error into that. So your circle of where you could potentially hit just got a little bit bigger. Obviously the big one is you aren't a perfect shooter. Nobody is, especially in a typical hunting scenario. I mean, in a best case hunting scenario, you're prone on a bipod. You could probably hold a quarter MOA, you know, just that little bobble that you do see. Best case scenario, you're going to hold a quarter MOA. It's probably a lot bigger than that because your heart's racing and you're not in a perfect spot. Now, ammo has variation. If you're hand loading and you're doing a really good job, probably under 20 feet per second is great, but very often you'll just get one that shoots 50 FPS faster if you're shooting many factory loads. Oh, and when you entered your ballistics, it's actually 15 degrees colder than that, so that also increases the error. And that one MOA gun, well, it's usually shooting one, one MOA, but every once in a while it's 1.3 MOA. And as you're hunting, you go up an elevation 800 feet, and that throws off your ballistics from when you entered them in. And when you put your scope on, you tried to get it level, but you were off by just three degrees. That also introduces error. So now, you said you had a one MOA gun, and so I'm gonna shoot four inches at 400 yards. And it's not quite true when you put reality into the situation. Really, we're shooting a 13 inch circle, and it is actually possible to miss the vitals. That's why when we're talking about accuracy and precision, I wanna reduce every variable that I possibly can because I know I'm not a perfect shooter and I wanna reduce any possible errors. What we don't want is tolerances to stack. So what are they? If you get a gun, you go out and shoot and it's just not shooting well, let's talk through everything possible that could go wrong. The first thing that I wanna look at is in the mirror. Before I look at the gun and try to blame something on the gun, I wanna make sure that I'm doing everything perfectly. And the first thing I wanna do is make sure my shooting position is as solid as it can be. When I'm doing accuracy tests for this channel, I always go to the official gun range on a concrete bench with sandbags so that I absolutely can shoot a tight group. In that kind of situation, I can probably hold one eighth of an MOA, just barely any wobble. I can shoot that incredibly accurate. But if I'm put in, put in a hunting situation where I've got to make a hundred yard shot standing, I don't know, maybe I'm like one, uh, I'm maybe six MOA. And then sitting in all the different positions you can kind of see here. And so first of all, make sure you're in a good position to really test out this gun. And if you're not very experienced, you know, if you've shot inch groups before, but you've never actually really shot a quarter or a half inch group at 100 yards, then maybe this is something you do want something a little bit, somebody a little bit more experienced to take a look at to make sure the issue is not in the mirror. And I can say that because I know many times I've blamed a gun and it ended up being user error. We've set our background. It's not user error. Now, what do we look at? Sorry guys, the next minute and a half of this video got censored by Google. They completely demonetized me, and that means that I've got to go through the video and just guess what they found objectionable. 
And so I finally cut this section out and apparently they're taking it now. So if I, there were anything I could do about it, I would. I'm just discussing how to get the scope level on a gun, uh, but big tech really wants to censor you to make sure you aren't allowed to see that content. Sorry. If I know it's not me, I'm shooting well, and I know the gun is scoped perfectly, the next thing that I'm gonna look at is the ammo quality. Ammo quality varies a lot. And during this period of time where ammo is so hard to get, some of the ammo manufacturers have really slipped on the quality. I've seen some crazy ammo, factory ammo over the last two years that I know those companies were producing better stuff before. But then you also need to look at the fit for your gun. So here's something I've noticed. We talk a lot about inherently accurate cartridges. You know, we say, oh, this is inherently accurate. That's not. I don't think I've seen that. Uh, I, I don't know that I've seen like a, that some cartridges, oh yeah, that's 6.5 Creedmoor. It's going to be super accurate. I, I haven't really seen that. There are too many other factors that are just way bigger than the cartridge design, right? But what I will say is they're way less picky. Many of the modern cartridges are a lot less picky because they have tighter freeboard. There's less jump into the rifling. There's less space around that bullet and that cartridge as it's going into. And so there's less opportunity for that bullet to torque and get off, off a concentric path. I have found that when I'm shooting 280 Ackley Improved, 7 Mag, 308, many of these you know traditional cartridges that have been around forever, I can get extremely good results from them, but sometimes I'll shoot a particular load and whoa, it's shooting a crazy three inch group. And then I'll switch to a different load and whoosh, everything really tightens up. With 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 PRC, these more modern case designs, 6.8 Western, I just haven't seen that. I haven't seen loads that are really bad and then it just shrinks up. Usually it's like good to great. The next thing that I'm gonna look at is the quality of the barrel that I'm using. So many times I've seen people that have a gun that's shooting okay, they swap out a barrel and ta-da, everything is fixed. The next thing I might look at is the action that you're shooting. 22LR is maybe a good example of this. So why is this gun so expensive and how does it get such good results? This is a Voodoo V22. For 22 LR, a lot of it is in the action. So those 22 bullets, you've seen it a lot of times as you're putting the action, as you're putting a bullet in there and you extract one, sometimes you'll see it got really marred up on the side as it was coming from the mag and going into the barrel. Well, that's obviously gonna affect the accuracy a lot, but it's not just the marring of it, it's also how concentric is it? How perfectly can put it put it straight into the lands and the rifling in that barrel? So the way this Voodoo does it is it's a controlled round feed and there's no feed ramp. It's not bouncing up off of something. It's coming up out of that magazine, it's grabbed and pushed straight into the barrel so that we don't mess up the ammo as it's going. So how do you know who makes the best actions? One thing that I look at is look at the barrel manufacturers that are making you know, aftermarket barrels and see if they're offering a pre-fit for that action. If they're offering a pre-fit, it means the company making that action is to such tight tolerances that they can just make the same barrel every time and you can just screw it on and be done. If they're not offering a pre-fit from it, but it's still a very popular gun, it's probably because the barrel manufacturer knows there's just not, there's, the tolerances aren't tight enough in that action in order to just guarantee that you can screw this barrel on and be good to go. Okay, I put this one next, but it probably should have gone before the action. It's the fore end of the stock. Here's a Tika T3X Superlight and a Ruger American. This is the fore end, just this front part of the stock, right? This is a major problem in accuracy. There are two potential issues. One is the actual bedding, and that's you know how this metal of the rifle, how it actually contacts the stock here. If there are you know burrs and it's really not equal and it's not and it's kind of gappy in spots there, then it might vibrate a little bit different every time you shoot. So the bedding can be one issue. 
The second thing that I think maybe is more common is on inexpensive guns, that fore end, I hope you can see in the video, it really bounces in and out as you squeeze that fore end of the stock, that fore end. And that means something can be in contact with the barrel one time and not in contact with the barrel the next time. The gun's gonna vibrate differently as it's shooting. This is a huge issue. This is like, when we talk about, ah oh man, cheap guns aren't as accurate as some of the others, it's probably the stock uh, that's one of the big things we're talking about. And the way it happens is, you know, you're shooting a sandbag and it's here on one shot and then the next one it's here. And that changed the spot. And because you don't have a very forgiving stock that's real rigid, it's gonna change the shot. If you're shooting on a more expensive gun, like for example, this Bagara, Honestly, this thing is so stiff, it's not gonna really matter if your bag scoots up a couple inches here, won't make a big difference. Or if you're shooting on a bipod where it's really pressing up on that stock, if it's rigid enough, you, you buy yourself some potential shooting mistakes that really just won't register on the target. I don't know where to put this one in the list, because it's maybe not the first thing that I assume is wrong, because usually this is right but it happens all the time. And so if you're throwing shots wildly, check those. I was gonna end the video here, but I just wanted to show you a practical example of kind of what I mean. So here's an inexpensive gun, it's a TC Compass. And so I'm not saying you should ex expect more because it's a very inexpensive gun, but here's some of the issues you see. Well, you put this on a rest and it's rounded up there. And so you're already on a wobbly spot you attach a bipod and just look how much, whoops, the forend moves of that stock. Look how much that moves if you add a bipod. I mean, whoa, that's a lot right there, right? And then you're not going to get a full cheek weld and so you're gonna be hovering and that head's loose, you can be uh, bumping the gun. It really just isn't built for extreme precision. Now it's a fine gun, especially for the price it is, but I wanna compare that to something like the SIG Cross. SIG Cross has a flat bottom, so it will actually rest. It also has these, you know, M-lock slots so that you can attach, you know, a bipod easily so you're steady. You can get a perfect cheek weld that you can adjust right here. The bedding that we talked about, no longer an issue because nothing even touches the barrel. It has that hand guard around it. There's just, there's no bedding necessary. So you can see that some of the newer designs of rifles really do solve a lot of potential issues that could come from uh, some other rifles. Now, you don't have to have a, a format like this to have a very accurate gun. You could have a you know, very traditional type stock that, that shoots very precise groups, but I am very attracted to a lot of the new styles because I realize how forgiving it's gonna be that there are some of those tolerances that we're just wiping out we don't have to worry about anymore. You guys, I love this stuff. I love looking at all the potential issues and knocking them down one at a time. When you have a gun that's finely crafted, it's all about minimizing tiny, tiny little things that could go wrong to give you repeatable results. Not just the one group you can post on Instagram, but repeatable, steady results every single time. And so these are a few things that you might look at if you're having issues. Hope the video was helpful. Thanks everybody for supporting Backfire.